mentioned earlier would like to highlight on the office of the ombudsman how many kenyans actually know what the office of the ombudsman does well that's what we'd like to bring to you and also just to find out what should we expect now that it is under the helm of a new chair and that is honorable florence kajuju who now joins me in studio thank you for joining us uh, she's also the secretary general for the african ombudsman and mediators association uh, quite a um, long title there um, <laughs> Uh, but maybe let's just first of all start by defining what the Office of the Ombudsman does and also just to mention that it's also the Commission on Administrative Justice in Kenya. Oh, thank you so much and uh, good morning Kenyans. Um, it is my pleasure to be with you today in this year 2019 and we thank God for the blessing and I thank ETN for hosting the office of the Ombudsman today so that we shall be able to talk to Kenyans and uh, make them understand what we do so that they can approach the office and uh, be able to get assistance. Uh, I joined the office of the Ombudsman in, the, in August 2018 uh, with two other commissioners, Commissioner Sati who is the Vice Chair and Commissioner Lucy Dongo and uh, what basically we are supposed to do is to, uh, to, to support Kenyans, assist Kenyans mm. who have uh, complaints against uh, public uh, servants who are supposed to offer a service to them. Uh, we are constituted under the Commission on Administrative um, Justice Act and we are constitutionally constituted body under the Constitution um, Article 59, just like we have the IEBC, the Judicial Service Commission, the Teachers Service Commission, so it is a commission like any other, but ours is basically to look at what um, the public servants are supposed to do in the national government and in the county governments, and if there is a service that has not been delivered, which a Kenyan is entitled to, maybe um, you have applied for uh, a passport and it has not been uh, given to you for reasons known to the immigration officers, you approach us that we are able to uh, push the, the public servants so that they are able to release the passport. Passport, uh, issuance of um, uh, birth certificates, identity cards, any document that it, you require from a government office that is not given to you, then it is our duty to make sure it is uh, given to the citizen. Also, Simply put, then, would it be right to say that the office of the ombudsman is, to, is there to ensure that uh, public officers, one, do their job and ensure that the rights of Kenyans are maintained? Exactly. And um, also, we go further. If there is a dispute between persons who are employed by government and the persons who are offering that service, mm -hmm. then you come to, with your, if you are the aggrieved party, you come to the ombudsman, you register your complaint. Because uh, there are times that uh, a Kenyan might just... Uh, be sent out of his job without even being given an opportunity to be heard. So it is up to us to look at the complaint that has been registered, uh, where it, whether it has been emanated from the Kenya Power or whichever government institution or from the county governments. Mm -hmm. Once you come to us then, ours is to offer alternative dispute resolution we, because we, we are go between the courts and uh, the people who have been aggrieved. So when you come to us, we don't take you to court. We, we sit down with the parties. The, the servant, the public servant who has failed you and the person who is aggrieved, we, we do mediation, arbitration. We try to reconcile the parties and get a solution to the problem that is um, affecting that any Kenyan. Mm -hmm. That is basically what we are supposed to do. All right. Now... Sounds very good, but if a Kenyan had that aggrieved uh, or, or that aggrieved party wanted to approach you, what's the procedure? Uh, we, there are so many ways that you can approach us. You can make just a telephone call because uh, we have uh, the, telephone, um, the, the telephone numbers that have been floated to Kenyans. You can send an email to us. You can come to the office in Nairobi and register your complaint. We also have four of offices in the, at the branch level uh, in, uh, in Mombasa. Nairobi, uh, Nairobi is the headquarters. Uh, we have Kisumu, we have Isiolo, and we, are, we have... Um, offices in Eldoret, but we also have Uduma centers where we host, um, uh, 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 we have a, a clerk who will listen to you, register your complaint, and try to sort it out. If they can't, then they send it to Nairobi, where we'll ask the parties to sit down with them. We even go to the parties where they, they are, in case that they are incapacitated in terms of traveling. So whenever you have a dispute against a public servant, ours is to come to you, listen to you, reconcile the parties, and make sure if it's your dues that are 
have not been released to you, if it's pension, because there's a huge problem uh, with um, uh, our people who have retired from mm -hmm. public service. They have not been paid their pensions. So we move with the pensions department, sit down with them. We also involve the Attorney General and make sure that those who have, have suffered have been given their pensions. Okay. And I look at the core values of the Commission, and one of them is fairness. Uh, second one is accountability. And it says here, act with integrity, account for activities, and accept responsibility. Now, that's a problem that we have in this country. When we look at uh, corruption index, recently we had Transparency International uh, put us, um, I think we only improved by one index which no actually we went down one index uh, which is rather unfortunate how is your office uh, working to ensure that that is actualized act with integrity account for activities and accept responsibility that is where uh, basically the office of the ombudsman is there. It's, it's sort of, um, it's called a citizen advocate. We are the advocates of the people. In South Africa, the ombudsman is called the public protector. Mm. Because it is our business to ensure that where you are supposed to receive service, where you are supposed uh, government to help you, whatever government is supposed to do because there are rights that we expect uh, to get from government, then we ensure that that, that right is is, um, is a, a, a applied to you. Mm -hmm. uh, there are issues of, of course, fairness. Mm -hmm. There are issues of bias. There is a lot of impunity. There is a lot of corruption that happens. But uh, whenever an issue of corruption comes to us, we know that EACC is tasked with the issues of corruption. Mm -hmm. But we, do, we don't run away from an issue that has been brought to us. We partner with EACC. We have an investigation department that also looks at issues that affect uh, Kenyans. And we work together with the ESCC and any other government body to ensure that um, whatever issue that has arisen that is affecting a Kenyan that has come to us, even on our own uh, motion, because at times whenever we notice an issue has happened, we don't wait for people to come to us and complain. We have the power under the act to move to a motor on our own motion and make sure that that uh, problem is sorted out. Okay. And I see one of the core uh, things that uh, the Office of the Ombudsman is there for, and you did allude to that, is maladministration. And uh, this is the primary role of the Ombudsman in Kenya. It includes service failure, delay, inaction, inefficiency, ineptitude, discourtesy, and unresponsiveness. Now, we do know that uh, government institutions and offices sometimes are notorious for some of those things. What is the procedure for me to have that addressed? Do I come to the office of the ombudsman? Uh, do I complain through that office which I am aggrieved to? And how do you um, address that? The, the Act allows us to support various ministries in departments and agencies to set up a complaints handling system so that the first point of call where there is a dispute uh, is within the ministry. Mm. So that now the ministry, once we have actually supported Minister of Public Service, they work with us. We have been able to set up a complaints handling system within the ministry. Um, Kenya Ports Authority, uh, uh, they, we've been able to set up a system. So we are approaching many agencies and many departments and asking them, even the Minister of Lands, has uh, that, uh, that kind of an arrangement. Set up a complaints handling system and have an officer who is in charge to receive issues about Kenyans so that now if you cannot resolve them at the point of the ministry then whoever is aggrieved can still come to the ombudsman and we listen to them and try to arbitrate and there are so many instances that Kenyans have come to us and we've been able to, to sit with the parties we are even allowed under the act to conduct hearings mm. to conduct inquiries if there is that maladministration within that particular office then it is our business to investigate and come up with a solution that is going to help this Kenyan who has a problem. All right. Any success stories that maybe you would share? I mean, the office of the ombudsman has been there since the promulgation of the constitution. So there should be some gains that you can quote and say, this is what we've done so far. We have been able to, the former administration that was led by Honorable Tieda Molo had quite a number of um, uh, settlements. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, the, by the last count of the cases that were, were, were registered with us, that time when uh, the former chair was there, there were over 300,000. And um, I, I've, I've confirmed that over 250,000 cases were, were settled. We've been able to settle most of the pensions um, cases that were brought to the ombudsman. We've been 
unable to settle issues about land where um, uh, there, there has been a complaint that does not touch on the, the, the National Land Commission, but it, it involves uh, the office of the Ombudsman maladministration impunity. We've been able to work through and ensure that we get a solution. Mm -hmm. So there have been uh, success stories, but uh, the, the only uh, problem that we have is that we have not been able to reach out to the counties. And that is exactly what I want to do. Because devolution is a very good thing. But it has also brought a number of challenges mm. because we have uh, Kenyans who are working within the counties. We have people who used to work in the former regime of the governors who are not re-elected mm -hmm. into office. Most of them were told to stop to work, were stopped by the current governors uh, from working. Those are people who have come to us and they are still complaining. So we are looking at all those issues to ensure that uh, those who must deliver service then deliver service to Kenyans without delay and responsibly. Mm -hmm. One of the things I also note here is the commission is to take care of um, you know things to do with integrity and corruption. Now we do know that the government has put out a fight from what we are seeing in terms of fighting corruption. Does your office um, support this in terms of other ways of fighting corruption? Because fighting corruption you can arrest, mm -hmm. uh, there can be convictions, but surely there must be other systems and ways that we can put in place to encourage especially those who are not corrupt. Um, Actually, we believe in our commission that uh, maladministration is a uh, leans to corruption. Mm. Impunity is what leans to corruption. Delay is what leans to corruption. Because if uh, I, I, I require service from you, and you're not delivering that service, and you require some money from me so that you can fasten the process, that is corruption at the end of the day. That is why we must fight maladministration, delay, and impunity. But what we are doing, and um, I'm happy with what the president did through the, the, the anti-corruption conference that was held in Bomas. We attended, almost all the commissions attended because we are all together in the fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've said before that we are working with the ESCC in issues of corruption. So it is up to us now to ensure that um, uh, where there are issues that can lead to corruption, then we stop that because most of the problems are systemic. Right. When a service is not delivered, it leads to corruption. Mm. But we, we as the Office of the Ombudsman have been recognizing what Kenyans do. And you remember the former chair set up the Uduma Ombudsman Award where they were recognizing uh, Kenyans who have offered good service to the people and we intend to continue with that recognition. Uh, just the other day when we had the terrorist attack at Duzit, uh, we saw what our police forces uh, did. We actually did a letter to DCI Kenoti and to Inspector General Boynet mm -hmm. to congratulate them through the office of the Bootsman for the good work that they did. Mm -hmm. They acted very fast, they saved quite a number of lives and we appreciated them. Mm -hmm. So we recognize the good but also condemn the bad. All right. And, and do you think that a positive push towards those who do good would probably work better than just the negative. Exactly, it will. Mm -hmm. And we intend to, uh, we, we have um, a performance contracting process where through us, we are able to tell the ministries, those who have done very well, we recognize them. Actually, one of the things we shall be doing today is after a survey that has been conducted by the Office of the Bootsman on the counties that have uh, complied with access to information, we are congratulating those counties and uh, recognizing them that they are doing very well. Mm -hmm. So we intend to continue with that process so that we can and encourage more Kenyans to do good, those who have uh, been able to serve Kenyans well. Okay. Now you're new on the chair of uh, the Ombudsman Office. What should we expect from Honorable Kajuju now as the chair of uh, that particular institution? Um, one of the challenges that I've realized is that uh, Kenyans don't exactly know the Office of the Ombudsman, and they actually don't even know what we do. So it's up to us because the law allows us to do a lot of public awareness and to ensure that we go to deep down to the people because we are serving the Kenyans, we are oversighting the national government as well as the county government. Mm -hmm. So we cannot just sit at the national government and say, all is well in the counties. So I intend to take the office of the Ombudsman to the counties, do a lot of public awareness, sensitization, to tell them it is your right to be served. You don't have to pay for a service. And if there is a complaint, you don't have to go to court because courts at times are expensive and Kenyans have not been able to approach 
approach them because they don't have the funds, they don't have the access, but we are saying through the office of the Ombudsman, we offer alternative dispute resolution. Come to us, because even the judiciary at times will refer matters to us and say, this one can start off at mediation stage mm -hmm. through the office of the Ombudsman so that parties don't waste a lot of time because we know at times the backlog in the courts and also the expenses because we don't charge. You come to us, it's a government office, we offer the service free of charge, we'll come to you where the complaint is and we'll mediate and ensure that we come up with a solution. Okay, would one be uh, accurate to approach the office of the Ombudsman should you need legal representation and cannot afford it? Because that's another area where we find that many Kenyans may not have the information and don't know how to go about it. Uh, the Lord uh, stops us from doing some things. Uh, if your matter is in court, if you have taken your complaint to court already, the law does not allow us to interfere with that process. Okay. We leave the judiciary to uh, continue with the on. process, not unless the judiciary then refers the matter to us for alternative dispute resolution. But if you have not gone to court, then we, we, we you come to us and we'll going to offer that service free of charge. Mm -hmm. So whether it, it, we, once we get to know about the complaint, we'll, we'll deal with it. If you come to us, we'll offer you service. And if it's a matter of public interest, then the ombudsman has also gone to court. We can go to court and uh, ask the court to grant us some of the remedies that we must be um, given by the judiciary, if at all the office of the ombudsman is not able to deal with it through the alternative dispute resolution. And all this is free of charge. Does one Everything have to qualify? Everything is free of charge. Mm -hmm. uh, there is nothing that uh, demands of you or you, a qualification that you must have to come to us. Every Kenyan has a right to access the office of the ombudsman. Okay. And today we, you are launching the Access to Information Act. Tell me a little bit about that and what the objective is. Uh, much as we, are, we have the roles of complaints handling through the uh, uh, Commission Administrative Justice Act, uh, we, are, we also have a mandate that was given to us in 2016 in Parliament. They passed the Access to Information Act, uh, which is um, uh, 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 built around uh, Article 35 of the Constitution, where you are, the government or the state is supposed to give information to any Kenyan that uh, they require. So that, uh, that law was passed in 2016, and the office of the Ombudsman is tasked with the oversight and enforcement capacities to be able to ensure that that law is actualized. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing today is um, we are launching, we realize that uh, uh, Kenyans might not understand some of the laws that are available or that are where their rights are, are, are being provided for. We decided to simplify the law so that now uh, we have a guide and a publication that uh, tells you what is proactive disclosure. If you need this information and you go to a government entity and it is, doesn't give you that information, whom can you run to so that you get that information? Mm -hmm. So we are simplifying the law so that Kenyans will get to know from the county to the national government what is it they are required to know. And in the, even government by itself. And on Monday, we attended a function where the, where the deputy president was um, presiding on open government partnerships. Mm. Because government has a duty to proactively disclose information. And that is uh, twinned with Article 35 of the Constitution and the access to information. So we are trying to simplify the information to Kenyans so that once we get to do public awareness, they will be able to look at this guide and understand that a county government has a duty to disclose the tenders, to disclose the procurement process, who has won this particular tender, to look at uh, what is the county planning for this particular county for the people within a certain period of time. To look at the county integrated development plan. It must be exhibited in the offices, on the website, and everywhere that the county uh, citizens can approach it. So there are those counties that, uh, according to our survey, have been able to comply like Makweni. And um, like Kipia, to some extent, they have simpli simplified their laws into Kiswahili. Right. So we are going to tell Kenyans, this is a, an easier way of you getting to know what services you are supposed to get as a matter of right, mm. what information you must get as a matter of right. And if you demand this information and it doesn't come to you, come to us, we'll be able to get that information and also deal with the entity that has failed to deliver the information. All right. And this normally is a challenge that we have 
have in terms of disseminating information that is done in the urban setting such that now those in other counties don't get this information is there a plan to ensure that this is rolled out to the counties because this is a, a, a right that every kenyan should know not just those in the urban or let me specifically say in nairobi we have actually um we've trained uh, access to information officers because counties even under the county governments act are supposed to appoint a, or designate a county access officer so that this information officer is able to look at what must be given out to the citizens as a matter of right and when they demand for information it is also released to them so we have trained um, at 44 uh, out of the 47 uh, counties, we've trained 44 of the access to information officers who are working with us. Uh, we also intend to move to the counties to tell the counties this is the way it must be done. We, you must be able to avail the information to the public so that they can access it. So we are working on that and we must be able to get to the, to the level of the counties and the All national the government. Counties. Okay. Yes. And uh, who are invited for this particular launch that you have and uh, is it free of charge? Can we all come in? Yes, of course. You're welcome. Uh, KTN, I'm sure, will be there as well. Mm. Uh, we have the Minister of Information, because the Minister of Information, we are working with him as the Cabinet Secretary to ensure that the regulations to, uh, to actualize the Access to Information Act uh, are operationalized, and we have a task force that is working around it, and we have invited the Ministry of uh, Public Service. Uh, the PS um, is attending because the Minister is away. We have invited the Office of the Attorney General because we also work with him and uh, he's sending a representative and we've invited the media it's to be present mm -hmm. we've invited other commissions because we work together to ensure that um, our roles where they complement we are able to deliver the service to the people and we've invited Kenyans of goodwill to attend the function it is um, going to start at 9 30 a.m at the Hilton Hotel and uh, we are going to make sure that uh, Kenyans get to understand what access to information is and how they can uh, get that information from the state. All right, and as we wind up, what is the one thing that you'd want Kenyans to know from the Office of the Ombudsman moving forward that you're there for them? Um, first of all, I'm happy that um, even in Parliament, my business was to represent the interest of the people. This time that I, I, the, the, I was given this job, I intend to ensure that um, the office of the ombudsman is felt right down to the, the grassroots level. So that the people who are, uh, because the people who suffer actually are the ones who are the grassroots. Mm. These are the people that I intend to reach out to and uh, give them the information. I'm, I'm telling you now uh, today that uh, well, the services we offer are free of change. Once we notice there is a problem or a complaint that has been raised uh, by a Kenyan, it's up to us to come to you, offer that service, m follow it up and make sure it is done. Mm. So feel free to come to us. Our offices are at, at Westlands, at West End Towers, at the second floor. But we also have offices at um, several counties. But we also intend to continuously open more offices. We shall be opening an office in Gariza. God willing, before March, and also ensure that within the Uduma centers, because we have so many Uduma centers in Kenya, that we have a, a desk officer who is able to give that information about the office of the ombudsman and receive complaints and be able to settle these complaints where Kenyans have raised them. And if they cannot, then the office of the ombudsman from Nairobi will be able to get to the people at the county level and sort out those problems. All right. And I guess being the chair of uh, the office of the ombudsman, you're representing the people, but you also are representing the people as woman rep. How do you compare the two jobs? Maybe just to move away from that and just how, how you're handling now the, this compared to being a woman rep. Uh, of course, the, 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 the woman rep seat, one of the things that we were supposed to do in the National Assembly was to represent the interests of the people. But of course, that time you look at your county because that is where you are elected to mm. serve. This time I have a wider mandate to represent Kenyans at the national level. So I feel uh, more encouraged to ensure that what I learned in the National Assembly, I'm going to use it much more to ensure that uh, the services that Kenyans are supposed to, to receive, they'll get them. Um, and uh, using the law that I was taught, 
throughout my life, then I can make sure those disputes are settled mm -hmm. and, of course, work with the other government institutions to quicken the processes of settlement mm -hmm. of disputes. I'm sure there's a, it's a very different terrain from an elected post and one that is appointment, and that's what it is now. So what are some of the lessons that you're bringing on board from uh, you know, the county level and the fact that you were uh, uh, elected by the people at that point in time, but this is now an appointment? Mm -hmm. What lessons have you brought on board? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I thank God because uh, from the, my experience in uh, representing the county, I learned, I, I have a deeper understanding of the problems that people go through. The problems that my people are going through at, in Meru are the same problems that Kenyans are suffering today. And now I thank God also because I have an opportunity to make sure I directly solve those problems. So whatever issues that arise in as far as um, service to the people is concerned, I have a position that I'm going to ensure. Uh, the, the law provides for that. I have the capacity to do that through the secretariat and with my colleague commissioners and the government is on our side. Because at this point in time, the president is keen to ensure that the big four agenda is accomplished. He cannot do that. He might not succeed without this commission of uh, 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 administrative justice because these people, if they, if they, those who are employed cannot offer service to Kenyans, ensure that universal health care is rolled out in the entire country, uh, uh, ensure that manufacturing happens to each and every Kenyans where it must, then the Big Four agenda will not succeed. So we are trying to ensure that we support the president so that the Big Four agenda can also be realized. All right. Do you see yourself going back into elective politics? No, I'm not, um, I'm, not, I'm not doing politics in the commission. I'm no longer the politician that I was serving the people in Meru County. My business now is to do the business that I was given in the uh, Commission on Administrative Justice, and that is where my mandate lies. Okay, I not, not my currently, but after, after your at, at some point, the term will end. Do you see yourself maybe going back? Unfortunately, my term is supposed to end, <laughs> God willing, the six years are in 2024, mm -hmm. up to 2024. So, at, at so you know what, what you... happens in 2022, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we are also still looking for a female president. Is that something that maybe you'd aspire to do? This is also giving you experience, you know, being in the office of the ombudsman. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're willing to... To, uh, look into you know um, appointments or elect, whether elective or whichever way it is a god-given uh, process mm. so uh, right now I'm very comfortable where I am I must be able to uh, to show Kenyans that I have the capacity that I'm able to deliver for them today so let us deal with what we have for now mm -hmm. and with that so God you're satisfied with where you are and uh, what whatever lies tomorrow is tomorrow I don't know is about tomorrow? tomorrow but I'm happy where I am today <laughs> okay uh, we're just winding up but maybe just to know how do you manage to balance such a busy schedule and family life and other things that you'd also just want to do as a you know normal citizen in Kenya in fact uh, when I was in the National Assembly it was um, a huge task to balance between family and uh, the, the, the and, position and, that I held. Mm. And now it's even easier because I'm able to, I, I have time uh, for the family and you must be able to create time for your family. That one, it's, you can't negotiate on that. Mm. So it's a matter of being in the office when you must be in the office, being with your family when you must be with your family, serving Kenyans when you must be able to serve and women are able to multitask anyway. So I thank <laughs> so God that told. we have that capacity to multitask. Okay, and your advice to women generally in Kenya, leadership for women has been a struggle for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. We even know that the two-thirds gender bill has still not gone through mm. despite the fact that it's enshrined in the mm. Constitution and that right there is a problem. What advice would you give to women? Uh, our women in Kenya, um, I can tell you that it's not easy um, getting leadership in Kenya but it's not impossible. We have been there, we have done it, we have succeeded and we are still there. So please never give up My, do, and don't ever quit because you feel that uh, people put uh, stumbling blocks mm. on the way, you can make it. We have been there, we have made it. Those, those of us who were there before have made it. So Kenyans uh, and women, uh, we receive support from the leadership and we believe that uh, we must be there also to balance the gender mm. so, and uh, to be able to deliver. Because I know women have the capacity to do very many things. So it is, it's, it, 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 we don't have to take it as, a, as something that is impossible. It is possible and we are there to mentor other women so that they can walk 
the well, fact you that have you have shown worked. that it is possible it just is possible. by virtue of the fact that you've been in leadership for a long time and we wish you all the best, Thank even you. as the chair of the commission. And Honorable Flor Florence Kajuju, uh, time uh, fails us and I'll have to release you. I know you have a launch mm -hmm. in about an hour, so uh, you need to get to uh, the Hilton Hotel for that. Thank you very much for joining us this morning Thank and we're wishing you all the best. I really appreciate it.